This time, I'm turning Wesley and Buttercup into zombies using Photoshop. I decided to do this edit a little differently. First I made a realistic zombie edit, and then I made a second version where the edit was done as an oil painting. This is that process. In this image there was that sword, so first thing I did is go through and mask that off. I used the clone stamp tool uh, just to get that out of the area and replace it with things that were already in there. Once my image preparation was done, I found some pictures of zombies from the right angle for his face, and I'm just gonna go through and isolate uh, elements of each of those that I like and begin replacing his face with that. So to do it, I mask off each one of the zombies faces so that I can get the parts that I want. I just make a mask and paint out what I don't like, and then I align those over his face usually by making my top image, the image of the zombie, a little bit less transparent. So I use opacity to be able to line it up onto my original image. Once it's lined up, I move on to the next one and continue the process. Once I had all of his facial geometry lined up, I decided I didn't really like the eyes. So I removed those and then I just made a mask over his original eyes with a solid color. And now I'm just going through and kind of shading those, making them a little bit more glassy. I noticed a lot of the images of zombies had really glassy eyes. Now that he's finished, same exact process with her. We'll go through and bring in some images for Buttercup, mask them off. Once they're masked off, align them over her face, and then get everything situated just right. The next thing to do is to go through and color grade all of those images so that everything matches the original photo. I do that with a combination of levels and curves adjustment layers. So here you'll just see me going through layer by layer and getting everything to the same level of contrast and saturation. Time to start working on the background. I'm gonna start first with a realistic edit. So here I've brought in some vines. I'll duplicate those vines, move them around until I have a nice kind of framing device. And then after that, I'm gonna start bringing in trees and building the background of the fire swamp. I want it to be at night, so you'll see I shift, I'm gonna shift all the colors to blues. Give it that night feel. And then I'll play around with contrast and shading for those so that I can drop everything farther and farther into the background. For each of these trees, I'm just duplicating one original tree and flipping it and transforming it. And then to change it into my blues, I'm using a combination of hue and saturation layers and brightness and contrast layers. 
so hue and saturation just to colorize it. Uh, sometimes I use a blend if on that to drop some of the blues out of the darkness. And then I do brightness and contrast just to drop the contrast because the farther something is away, the less contrast it'll have. I did some grass and some leaves just with shape layers and then I felt like it was time to start doing some light rays coming through the trees. I wanted that fire swamp feeling so a bright red in the back with red light rays coming through like there's fire off in the distance. So in order to achieve that what I do is I make a, a copy of the back layer. I do it really red in terms of its saturation so I shift that color. And then I do a uh, color range in under the select menu to select that red in the highest places. And then I blur it using a radial blur and we just use the linear version of that. So you'll see it makes light rays come out through the trees. Those take a while to render. So once that's done, what I'll do is duplicate that layer several times so that the light rays really show up and then I'll convert those into a smart object so that I can put more layers on top of it well more filters uh, namely I want to do some blurring because the light rays can be really sharp where they start at the trees but as they come out they should be blurred more and more so the next thing I'll do I think is go through and start putting some blur on my light rays. Uh, I'll just use field blur so that I can control how much blur is around the image. I start by putting one point at the sharpest place. I take that blur and I drop it down to zero. And then I put other points just upping the blur as it moves farther and farther away or dropping it as it gets closer to its origin point. So I turn that to screen because I want the uh, light rays to actually change the color of the trees as they hit them and screen will lighten things as it goes over it. Then I do a solid color adjustment layer and I clip that to the layer below it just to make it a little bit more red. And now I'm going in and putting some highlights on the trees. I decided to do it a little bit differently. Usually I'll use a hue and saturation layer. This time I'm doing something uh, slightly different. So here I just paint my highlight color over the spots in the trees I think the light would touch anywhere I want highlighted. You can see it's kind of messy right now but it gets better as you go. So you put your highlights in. Once that's there, change the blend mode to color dodge and you can see it gets super weird. Uh, but color dodge is one of the special blend modes. And then I can go through and with blend if by double clicking the side of the layer, I can change the underlying layer to have less shadows in it. You can see me doing that here. And because it's on color dodge, you see those highlights start to fade away a little bit. And then because color dodge is a special blending mode, if I have fill, I can change fill over here under opacity. And that will affect the projection of that layer on the layer beneath. So it gets me some pretty realistic highlights that I kind of like. Anywhere that I think it's too much, I just go back through and erase those out and kind of blend them in, feather them in. And then I move on to the next level.
Now that I got my people in, it's all just about color grading. You can see I've gone through and I'm just dropping the saturation on some things, dropping the hue on some things, dropping the contrast mostly. Uh, once I get everything feeling kind of appropriate as it's moving back in space, I'm going to do the exact same thing with my highlight layer. You can see there I just did blend if, uh, dropped it out of the shadows, change it to color dodge, change the fill till it fills in just what I want. And then I'll go back with my eraser and get rid of the parts that I think are too bright or too overwhelming. Do a few little adjustments here and there on shadows and then I should be good to go for my color gradient. Last little thing to do here is to add some fog. I do fog on different layers just to get some separation between each of my elements. And then finally I'll put some fog in front of them just to drop them back into the picture plane a little bit, help blend everything in. And then it's going to be on to camera raw filter. Uh, with any Photoshop composition, uh, I like to apply a filter at the end just to bring everything together. I find once you're finished just applying one filter, it doesn't have to be camera raw, but really anything over it will unify the entire composition. So I like camera raw. With the realistic edit done, it's time to go through and start doing some painting effects. I really wanted to try this oil painting effect on this uh, particular composition, so I decided to do a second look for these zombies. Here you can see I'm just going to go through with the blur tool, and I'll set that to a really small radius, and I'm going to pull all of the colors in the direction that I think they're going. So what this really is, is... Uh, an exercise in contouring the face so if the cheek is moving in a downward motion I pull my uh, brush strokes downward just like I would if I was painting um, so here you'll see I work my way all the way around the geometry of the face just using that blur tool I drop it down to have less strength so probably about 50% strength on the blur tool and you can see I adjust my size as I go to get uh, more detail or less detail as needed. And I'm just going to work my way along their entire face and their bodies. So this is that process of creating a, a very controllable oil paint effect. I want to go back in and add some highlights and shadows into the hair in particular. I find that really helps to have some pops of color. So I go through and I make lines of the highest highlight, the brightest color, and the lowest low light, the darkest color, in each of their hairs. And then I just have to go back through once I'm done and kind of erase out and make these more like pencil lines or paint lines that taper off. This would be a lot easier to do if I had a pen tool, but I don't use a pen tool. I'm just using a mouse for this. So everything here, I have to go back and erase out the lines. I think they look really good and effective though when I'm finished.
I'm gonna go through and start creating a background just using a wet media brush. Uh, I go through, I'm just choosing some of the colors from her dress. I really like that red. So I'll take the red and surround them with it and I think eventually I'm going to expand my picture plane out, my canvas size, just to make it more square, give them a little bit more space. So this whole process is me creating a background for them using some paint effects. The final thing I just did there was that I overlaid a canvas texture on top of it and I just used the uh, overlay or lighten blend mode to get that texture to affect the painting itself so it all looks like it's on canvas and being raised slightly by that canvas texture. finish up I do some final adjustments uh, I just make a new layer on top of everything I've done and then I can paint on top of that with lower opacity I can drop out some of the shadows that way add a little bit of highlights and then my last thing again is applying a filter over the entire composition so I use camera raw uh, play with some of the settings until I get something that I really like and that should be about it for this piece Here are the two finished edits. I call the first one As You Wish, and the second, Death Cannot Stop True Love. Thanks for watching. If you like the content I'm making, please feel free to show your support by liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Do you want to suggest any ideas for future videos now that the spooky season is wrapping up? Please leave a comment below. And as always, have a good day.